All right. All right. All right. Fine. I'll be a gracious host. How you doing? Little Mermaid is the scariest Disney movie by far, though. Why the hell is Ace Blade in your Kickstarter? <laughs> Some comics we gonna I'm getting controversial today. We're gonna get controversial today with with my my proudest moment is this interview and being able to talk to you too. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Taurus Comics in collaboration with Fourth Wall Production respectfully brings to you the 59th episode of the four tales podcast i am your host kyron silva from tours comics across that way is a lavender scripter of ace play danny j quick and together we are your two award-winning blurred comic creators here to help you find your next favorite comic we are live on the ages of geekdom network through facebook twitter twitch and youtube so if you're listening or watching us live thank you for your support but don't forget to like subscribe share and review this show and our podcast because all your positive reviews and interactions help us reach a bigger audience brother danny j quick how you doing today respectfully respectfully how you uh my back hurts because i'm old as hell and yeah. I, I'm, I gotta wonder why the hell you put ace the the, the sunglasses on because we, it's a bright there's a bright future ahead okay especially right. with our with our guests and with 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 your success and now that your back is starting to heal um with the projects that we got coming on so i had to put on the the, the sunglasses because the future is so bright all right well i do i do have a surprise for you today i was gonna show this last week but totally uh -oh. forgot um because as some of you guys know danny and i are working on a book called ballad of the black road yep. um it's a western series about a, a family with uh I don't even know how to really explain it outside of the fact that there's cowboys and horses. mysticism and horses. And it got me inspired. So I, <laughs> I want to know, has anybody ever asked you before if they've, if you've ever thought of creating like different incarnations of your characters, like maybe Ace Blade in the future or Ace Blade? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that That's always been a thought like uh I don't know if you've realized, but the the com all of the, the comics that I've done for other people, Ace Blade has made a cameo, you know, as different versions of himself. The uh mm. the Light Within comic that I did for uh Freestyle Comics, Ace Blade is a there's a, a Ace Blade drummer okay. in there. And then um the one that I'm working on now that I can't talk about um because I've I've been sworn to secrecy. Wait, um there's a, spoiler sworn to secrecy? What? There's a future, <laughs> there's a future Ace Blade. Um, in that one, and then also in Emerald Quest, there's a um, a primal, not a primal, but like a tribal Ace Blade that uh, that there's yeah. a uh, you know he has his own his own tribe and faction that's yeah, going up I, against. The... I know that one because that actually is the reason why in the beginning of our intro I say why the hell is Ace Blade in your Kickstarter? Yeah, so yeah. I know that. <laughs> all right, so anyways, the reason why I bring all this up is because because of our book and Ace Blade, I decided to draw Ace Blade as a cowboy. Hey, uh, that's dope. Yeah. It, uh, hold on. Wait, you know hold on. Wait. Let me do something. That, that that's hard to see. Gunslinger see. Ace Blade. That is hard to see. Let me see if there's a, a easier way for me to do this. Um. Hold on. Let's 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 do it like let's do it like this. But that oh, with the colors with the colors with the, the colors on like that. Bro, that's that's special, bro. Yeah, the, he got the he got the six shooter and he got the sword. There you go. See, see. And if if you are actually looking through the pages I've been submitting to you, uh, Ace Blade pops up as this. Wait, Very where? I, I must have yeah, missed it. It's an Easter egg. I'm not going to show you where it is. He, oh, he man. pops up in the background, in the in the page like this. So. <laughs> I love this, bro. Please, please, please send me that. <laughs> please, please send me this, bro. Right, listen, the cut off on his sleeves and everything. Bro, the tassels, the tassels <laughs> flying, the the mask over the front, just like a just like a a, a seventies western bandit. The yep. purple hat, the purple cowboy hat, the spade on the sword, bro. It's perfect. I, I didn't want to put the blades on the his uh gloves so i felt that'd be weird with him being a cowboy yeah. so i'd put extra tassels there instead that's perfect but... 
That's perfect, yeah. bro. Thank you. Then he Thank got you. the ace on the belt with the holster <laughs> on the side, bro. That's fresh. Hey, listen. And then I like that it's a button up too. That's yeah. a, that's a, <laughs> shirt is it's a button up with the sleeves with the sleeves torn off. <laughs> So if you're if you're listening on the uh, podcast, I'll put a link to this so people can see it. But yeah, this is a quick oh, little thing I did. You got yeah, man. I appreciate that. I love it. I'm listen. Right. I don't I don't cosplay a lot, but I would cosplay as this Ace Blade right here. <laughs> I would wear I would wear this. I would wear this right here, man. Man, hey, I, I want to see pictures. You've already done cosplay of Ace Blade. Yeah, that was that was back when I was a little better in shape, but. Um, <laughs> Gunslinger, yeah. I, I like this one. We're gonna have All to come right. up with a specific name for him, but I like it. All right, I don't think he should use Gunslinger. I think uh, Todd McFarlane yeah. got that I'm, on yeah. lock, so <laughs> Todd, Todd McFarlane got that was fun, but I like All that, right. man. I appreciate it. All right. All right, uh, Javon's in the house. Good morning, Javon. Uh, Tempest Law, good morning. What's good the morning. Honestly, good morning. everything you just say sounds awesome. We appreciate I'm it. assuming he's talking about you. So. Can't be, gotta be, yeah. gotta be you with that um, illustrious mm-hmm. introduction. I love the YMCA it. Ace Blade. Wow. The YMC Ace Blade. <laughs> the YMC Ace Blade. <laughs> See now, and I'm thinking about we need to draw a Navy Ace Blade, Biker Ace Blade, um, Indian oh, Ace Blade. The construction uh, Ace Blade. Construction Ace Blade. That's the fifth one. I can remember. <laughs> there we go. There the we YMC go. Ace Blade. That A C E Blade. <laughs> Facebook oh, user, I'm assuming Facebook user is Chapman. If Chapman, it's not Chapman, probably, yeah. yeah, it might be. Uh, it's either Chapman or, uh, um, what's his name? Um, that always pops up on everybody's show, J Man. Oh, I haven't seen J Man in a while. Yeah, you might need to check on J Man. Yeah, see yeah. Him every- <laughs> All right, all right. Enough funny business. Uh, we've wasted too much of our guest time. So uh, did you want to introduce him? Did you want me to do it? Go ahead. Yeah, you got it. All right. Facebook user says, nope. That's, no, that you're not help. Chapman or no, you're not J-Man. That doesn't nope. help. Yeah. We can't see your name. That's why. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. My good bad. morning. Well, good, good morning. morning my <laughs> okay. All right. I'm sorry. Did you say you want to introduce him or what? No, go ahead. You got it. Okay, all right. So we're gonna bring the creator writer of High Top, and I don't think we confirmed the correct pronunciation. I'm gonna say Daryl. You say Daryl, but I'm gonna say Daryl. No, you say Daryl. No, I'm gonna say Daryl Damper <laughs> on the line. All right. So we got it. We had a confusion because he said your name is Daryl because of no. something. I says Darryl. no. I did not. <laughs> It's it's Daryl. Daryl. When I filled out the form, it said that to type it how it was pronounced, and I typed it how you. I guess you would say (laughs) Daryl. Well, I tried to at least. So. Daryl. Yeah. All right. Good morning. Thank you for being a part of our show. How you doing? I'm good. Good. Thank you for having me on the show. It's a pleasure. Appreciate you having. And hey, to be honest with you, I even though we use that form, I always go back and try to look at people's videos. So I just went up and looked up one of your videos from your Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. Um, that you had going back in uh, November, December, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Oh, he says Daryl, so I'm gonna say Daryl." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then why were you yeah. questioning his Daryl? You were like, "It's Daryl." I'm like, "Man, the man says his name is Daryl. I knew it was hey. Daryl." We got it. We got I, it. I man. heard so many variations of my name. It's just, I, I just, I don't even crack people anymore. Just yeah, whatever you wanna. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm the same way. I'm the same way. All right. So for anyone that's not familiar with your work, uh. Give our, our audience a brief overview as far as what you do, your characters, your books, things like that. I am the creator of High Top Comic. Uh, started in, what year is this? 2020. 2021, issue one came out. High Top stars Anthony Shaviv. I am the writer, illustrator, creator, letterer, pretty much everything for the book. Do everything. And he is he inherits his gauntlets from his grandfather. They're biblical artifacts. And with him inheriting his gauntlets, he comes across the Sons of the Cross who collects the um, artifacts to gain their powers. They're trying to slowly take over the world. I don't know. Have you did you guys watch the Watchmen HBO series? Yep. So it's kind of like the um, the Warshack factor. 
like the KKK time, but they're like ramped up times 100, but they're not out killing black people and doing stuff like that. It's more taking over the world under the skies of the Sons of the Cross, which is a religious organization. So they're trying to collect his gauntlets for his power. And there's only like two artifacts left. They have his gauntlets and there's another artifact I haven't written into the comic yet. So right now they're after high top to retrieve those gauntlets and issue. There's a little bit of spoiler issue two and three saw the or issue three saw the body collector come. He failed. He couldn't get the gauntlet. So issue five and six, they're sending the crux, which is like high tops Joker pretty much. So that's going to be his arch nemesis from now on. That's the crux right there. So he's no mercy, savage type guy. He's going to get the gauntlets by any means necessary. So that's what high top has to deal with in issue six. Damn. Okay. Nice. Okay. Hey, see, that's what I'm talking about. When you come on the show, you got to tell it all. You got to. I don't. We don't care about spoilers <laughs> on this show. We want to okay. know. We definitely want to yeah. know. Okay, I like it. So, um, let's take it back to the beginning. What what you said this started in 20, uh, 20, uh, 21. What got you into? Well, comics? yeah, what, I what finished the comic in 2021. I had the concept way back from ooh, when I was in school. So that's probably. 2018 is when I started the concept of it, and I changed the story like probably a million times before I actually found the script and everything that I wanted to do. So 2018 actually was in the Art Institute of Virginia Beach. I was going to, and I from the final, I was taking the advanced illustration class, and the final was to create a comic book cover. So I created, that's when I created High Top then, but it was the whole story and everything was completely different. So I created High Top. It was just a pre-requisite, I guess, for the original character. And then I went from there, built up a story. And so since 2018, I'm building up the story of High Top and the villains and everything else. And I got High Top spinoffs on the way when I do this, because the issue that I'm doing now is pretty much his origin story from issue one through nine is High Top's pretty much origin story to becoming a superhero. And then after that, it's going to be a time jump and then branch off of different characters and continue a High Top story or issue 10, like probably 15 years later, stuff like that. So, Okay. Okay. That now, makes sense. All right. You you said you went to Virginia Beach. You don't you don't live in Virginia Beach, do you? No, that's when I okay. I was I was living in Virginia when I got out the Navy. I was in Florida and I was in Virginia. I was going to school in Florida and in Virginia. Then my GI Bill ran out, so didn't get a chance to finish school. So now I'm a, a YouTube learner. I do everything on YouTube and learn. So that's what I'm doing now. So it's free. So <laughs> YouTube is a great teacher. Yeah, it I, is. I, I, I get triggered okay. when people say Virginia Beach because that was one of the cities that was trying to steal the Sacramento Kings from us. So I just get oh, triggered man. on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So all right, let's talk about high top because we do want to talk about your story, but we got to talk about the design of this. Um, mm -hmm. What was the reasoning with him having this high top and the shape that the high top is in? That's a a unique shape of a high top. Well, I wanted it to be eye catching and ear catching like with high top because you know when you think of superheroes you just you know captain america superman but i wanted something catchy high top so it's originally right now issue one through nine is, is set in the 90s so that's why with the high top fade so he said in the 90s it's kind of like a kid and play mix and he's a serious character he's only 20 years old so he's still coming into being a young man as well as now he's burdened with these gauntlets that he didn't know nothing about so now with his journey is I'm 20, you know, I'm living life. Now I got thrown this gauntlet. Should I be a superhero? Should I retire after I take down this organization? Should I not take down the organization? And the fight is pretty much just thrown at his doorstep. So he's pretty much forced to fight the Sons of the Cross. But right now the, the design came, I wanted to do like a 1990s type character with the high top. And there's something that would catch people's ears and eyes with the design and everything. So, Okay, so it's not like... Uh, it's not like Black Lightning, who, uh, you know, when Black Lightning, when Black Lightning takes off the mask, the, <laughs> the, the, the afro goes with it, right? It's not no, like it's, that. that's it. That's his, his hair. He actually has the high top and everything. I wanted, and I was actually debating about that with my friend when I was talking. When I first designed the character, I was thinking just having him a regular brush cut, and then when he puts on the gauntlets, his disguise is the high top, so nobody knows his identity. But I just kept it like probably Iron Man and Captain America. Everybody knows. Who he is, or everybody's gonna know who he is. So his identity is not a secret. So nice. Some of y'all might not know, but I used to have a high top back in junior high in the '90s. So high top might be me. I don't know. I don't, believe it. I don't believe it. I need pictures. I also, I also had a tail that went down to my butt. But I had um, a rat yeah, tail. The, the rat tail. I had a rat tail. I did have I had a rat one too, and I was probably like four. 
And then I wanted to be a Ninja Turtle. And then my, I asked my sister to cut it for me because I wanted to be a Ninja Turtle. My mom got so mad. It was actually down to oh, my shoulder. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Damn. <laughs> No, I definitely had definitely had the rat tail. I can never get waves perfected. Um, I tra- no. but I you know I was trying too late into I was I was a nerd all the way up until high school. So by the time I wanted to to get waves, my my hair was already falling out. My I started losing my hair when I was twenty. So oh man, you know, mm. it'd be like that. Um, but you know, sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, Tyron <laughs> Tyron doesn't have them problems. His he got them natural curls. Natural. <laughs> it's my yeah, natural yeah, hair, that's why I'm wearing my hat now. I got. Ball spot on the back of my head, so been... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. Hair, man. Hair is a hair is a you know one of them things in the black community. My wife is a is a hairstylist. She actually she owns the the spot right next to us, and uh, you know that black hair is it's a it's a whole thing, man, for real. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I regret cutting my dreads. Now I had dreads last year, and then my dad was like, "Don't cut them. You're gonna go bald." I said, "No, I'm not." Now, oh man. Yeah. Up in the back of the- <laughs> Damn. <laughs> gotta Hit him with the pop. genetics. <laughs> <laughs> gotta, gotta listen to Pops. He was like, man, I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you, man. <laughs> trying to put some knowledge on you, but you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we are going to learn all the way, I guess. That's all good, though. <laughs> so I guess let's talk about that because because your character is so iconic because of his hair. Have you tried marketing it to maybe barbershops and places that are focused around hair to be like, hey, this character... Um, I have stuff. not actually. No, actually, I didn't even think of that. No. Okay, right, there see, you go. That's why you come on the Fortel podcast, right? There. <laughs> yeah, that's why. <laughs> that's why. No, uh, me that's a good idea. Been, we've been in the game a while, man, and you know we're not you know mainstream creators. We're both still indie indie creators, but um, we we've been around the block. Kyron especially. Kyron mm-hmm. Kyron's got connections out there in Sacramento that you wouldn't believe, man. Um, right. It's, a, it's, it's you, you laugh, but next month marks five years of Taurus Comics. Yeah. And then it's I good. did, I worked with another company for three years before that. So I'm coming up on eight years this year doing this. Yeah, nice. But yeah, I mean, I don't have as many books for most of my main characters like he does. So, like, he's no. out here talking about he's doing issue six and had issue nine planned out already. Yeah. Um, I mean, Daryl is a, is a one man show, though. He, he like he said, <laughs> drawing he's writing he's lettering he's coloring everything man I, um what what are what are your experiences with uh how do you like working as a one man shop as opposed to you know collaborating and stuff like that what are the pluses and minuses of that um the plus i can say it's mine so well issue 3 actually one of my friends helped me with issue 3 they did the cover and they did some of the interiors of issue 3 but everything else is mine with the plus side i can say it's my art you know so if anybody critiques it it's you know it falls on me the downside is sometimes it's exhausting, it's draining because I'm up sometimes till two, three o'clock in the morning. I'm just trying to push out these issues, and I wanted to do them monthly, but I was burning myself out. So now I'll probably release them every two or three months. So, yeah, that's a that's a grind right there. If it is, <laughs> especially with with indies and and not having, I don't know if you you know if you work a full time job or anything like that, but if it's your full time gig, then um you know you kind of have to put these books out in order to you know in order to make money. So Right. It's a, and, you know, trying to balance the <laughs> trying to balance the the need for sleep with the need to, to eat. <laughs> so, dude, it's yeah, right. Like it's not, it's not for the weak of heart. It's not. Yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> Javon Stokes, another another, you know, he does. He's one man shop, too, for visually stoked media. He does pretty much everything for his comics. So he I'm sure he can relate. Um, <laughs> but, you know, sometimes you, you want to like for me, I know my my style as an artist is not quite you know the superhero style that i you know that i want to um that i of the stories that i draw why are you looking like that Kyron? because you said my style as an artist are you you're calling yourself an artist now is that what's going on i draw but i don't i don't put out my work you know the first time you've ever said my style as an artist meaning (laughs) i am an artist you've always said i am not an artist like, like, dude, they'll be like, I'm not a rapper. You're like, I'm not an I'm, artist. <laughs> I say that I'm not an artist when it comes to comic books because I don't draw I don't draw comic book illustrations, you know. I might do a cover every now and then, I might do a pin up, but I'm not I'm not doing interiors, you know. Um, I'm not taking on client work for as an artist. Um <laughs> exactly. Hey, I've been practicing, I've been practicing in here. But um, but no, I think it's I think it's great to be able to do you know each 
each thing and to know, you know, or at least be able to have empathy for the people that you're asking to do those jobs by, you know, having some practice in each area. So right. um, even though I, even though I won't, even though I probably will never illustrate a comic book, I like to learn what it's like so that I can say, OK, if this person fell behind on this deadline, I can understand why they got a full time job. You know, pages are hard to do, especially at the level of detail that I want. Um, so, you know, um, it's it's just all all a give and take. So have you have you thought about working with other people to get these projects done or you think it'll just sh- slow you down? Uh, I've thought about it. I'm, I've been looking around, even art and other places, shopping around uh, to see what's in my price range, what I can afford. But okay. yeah, I definitely could. I mean, rather it's just a cover artist or just somebody coloring it while I do the pencils, just yeah, shopping around. So yeah, I saw a couple of uh, pinups on your website of other people who drew high top. Um, mm-hmm. the, the one on your, I want to say on your main, your main page, it's uh, four. Yeah, the design. cover. That's uh, his name was uh, Jaden Brown. I actually met him. I don't know if you guys know or heard of um Evan Bruce. He's the, he does like the five day comic book challenge, draw superheroes in five days. Oh no, no never he's out in that. Cali too. But anyways, uh, he has a Facebook group, and I met Jaden in there. He's one of the artists, and we talked and collabed, and I let him do the um, cover for issue six, or not the cover, sorry, the poster for issue six for the um, Kickstarter. So, okay, I like it. I like it. It's, a, it's good. To, good to be able to lean on some, um, you know, other people in the community, not just for you know, art and things like that, but it's kind of a network, you know, it's, um, yeah. you know, people, people, the number one marketing tool still to this day is word of mouth. Right. So mm-hmm. um, That's if true. you, you know, get your stuff in the hands of the right people, you know, and people enjoy it, they're more likely to tell other people about it. So. Now this, as far as uh, we wanted to get to know you also. So what were some of the books that you got into as a kid or even as an adult as far as comics are concerned, that maybe led you into making comics? Like, what was something about comics? Uh, I believe the first comic book I read, I was in seventh grade. And I don't know if the um, stat- laws of statues passed or not, but I think my first comic book actually kind of pickpocket from the dollar store. So it was uh, a <laughs> Rob Liefeld. It was like X Factor or something. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> incriminate myself. But yeah, the first one, I, and after that, I've been. Uh, I know a lot of people aren't Rob Liefeld fans, but I love Rob Liefeld. I love his unique art style and his drawing, Deadpool, X Factors, Cable, everything like that. Because I'm a '90s baby, so I grew up in the '90s and everything. So, and let me see. I love Todd McFarlane, love Spawn. I used to watch the probably too young to be watching the animated HBO show back in the day, but I used to wake up every night and at like 10, 30, 11 o'clock and jump up and watch Spawn. And when I found out it was a comic book, got into those and everything. So then I got into Marvel and DC later, but my first ones. I can remember was the Rob, Rob Rob Liefeld and Todd McFarlane. So nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I like you said, a lot of you know, some people don't like Liefeld, but you know, I met him recently and you know, he seems he seems like a cool guy. You know, he, he's passionate about what he does and he's a you know creator and he's got a lot of um he takes time with the people that come to see him. So that's one thing that I, that you can admire. Right. About. He's got a pretty good podcast too. So mm-hmm. um absolutely. I think a lot of us are inspired by the the nineties in, in uh, animation and in comic books. Um, and if, you know, if you got to, you know, put it, put one in your pocket to get it and take it home. X Factor <laughs> or, X okay. Wait, wait, no, we, we are not condoning <laughs> stealing in this podcast. Get, get your comics by any means necessary. If you, no, we are not condoning comics, stealing. <laughs> get into comics by any means necessary. Whatever you got to do to get in the comics. The creators will understand. <laughs> okay, you can go ahead and go to Fourth Wall Productions and steal all their comics. Do not steal anybody else's comics. <laughs> all right. so you can sign up to my mailing list and I'll send you one for free. You don't have to steal mine either. <laughs> there you go. That's, that's, if the creator wants to give you a comic, that's fine. <laughs> you know, you know. I actually put, I don't know if y'all remember back when um, Pirate Bay was a thing, but I actually... Uh, put, yeah. I actually put like the first two issues of Ace Blade up on Pirate Bay for people to <laughs> for people to take <laughs> like before I, before I had my website where people could go and download it for free. Like we do the same thing. We give away one on our mailing list. But before that, I was just like, hey, man, these, this first these first two issues have already paid for themselves. 
if you want them, you can have them. I put them up on Pirate Bay and people downloaded it. I was like, it's kind of cool. Nice. That is the most horrible marketing. <laughs> hey, Tyler, Perry, steal my comics. Tyler Perry if you don't want to steal it, I'll give it to you. <laughs> Tyler Perry built a billion dollar industry off of people bootlegging Medea. So, all right. <laughs> The moment you figure out how to, to make money off of people bootlegging your book, let us know so we can make some money too. All right, I will. Don't worry about it. All right. Um, I had a question here and I forgot what it was now. Okay, so all right, we have a couple more minutes before we do Danny's a uh, quick takes because I know he's excited about this. But <laughs> what is the what is the future for you for High Top? Because I know you mentioned. Uh, earlier um that you have spinoffs coming what's mm -hmm. going on with that? well i wanted the main characters if you um if you guys have been reading or just the audience in general whoever's been reading um when he gets introduced to um fade he's going to do his own spinoff after issue eight or nine he's going to go out and do his own thing that was high tops little spoiler that was high tops best friend he was one of the children that was abducted by the sons of the cross and he was brainwashed for a while the high top got him back so now now they're fighting the sons of the cross together so he's going to have his own spinoff i'm going to do uh a spinoff of the body collector, which was um, the guy that was coming to high top on issue three, going to his backstory and how he became the body collector. So he's black as well, but he actually didn't get brainwashed by the sons of Christ. He actually joined at his own free will because he believed in their call. So that's with that. And let's see what's another spinoff I was going to do. I have two more. I haven't written it out yet, but I have two more spinoffs planned. I have to figure out what it's going to be. But right now it's going to be Faye, high top's partner. He's going to have a spinoff and then the body collector. And what about High Top itself? How many issues do you have? Oh, it's going to go. Nine. It's going to go on until I can't write it anymore. I'm trying to be like Spawn issue three hundred something, whatever going up. So it's going to be. It's going to be going for a while. <laughs> okay. Okay. I love it. That's my main character. So it's going to. It's going to be going for a while. All right. So um, if you uh, so we talked about crossovers a little bit earlier. If you um had the opportunity to cross over, like um, let's say somebody decides to do a, you know. A universal wrestling wrestling tournament or something like that, where other characters came in from other universes and had to mm -hmm. do like a Royal Rumble style um, tournament. Would you be interested in doing something like that? Just oh yeah, of course. Mind. I'm always open to uh, collaboration. So everybody that I get onto, I talk to. Hey man, if you guys want to use High Top, if you want me to use one of your characters, just let me know, man, and shoot me a message, and we can make it happen. So I write them into the script, and you can write mine into the script. Just let me know. Or what about okay. somebody wanted to maybe have you draw them uh, a cover for them, uh, you know, for their series of artistic covers that they give out to creators to sell? Would that yeah. be something? Oh, uh, yeah. I'm, um, you know, money is makes the world go around. So I'm always open to go. do, you know, <laughs> covers and there illustrations. So <laughs> there we go. Okay. All right. All right. I mean, I'm just throwing. But, I, mean, I think high, if it is a universal cage match, I think high top uh, might be. God tier, so he might come out on top. I mean, I'm not bragging about the character. I'm just what, what are being the, realistic. Uh, so. <laughs> what are the What are the powers of the gauntlets? I um I saw one of your um the animations that you did um earlier in the year, and um I saw with um you know I'm putting on the gauntlets. Um, what what are the powers that come with that? Right now, it, he has speed, flight, he's healing factor, and that's what. And right now, he has the. I wouldn't call it lightning because that's, every, I don't know, typical every black person has, uh, character has lightning. So I guess this, I don't know, the rays that come out of his gauntlet. So that's what he has right now, the little energy beam. So flight, the super speed, the um, healing factor, and the, the beams that come out the gauntlet. That's what he has so far. So And he's still learning his power. So it's going to be some more added, but that's what he has right now and up to issue six. Oh, so he got that, he got that Deku. Thing where they're just gonna you're gonna keep adding powers as yeah he's gonna, he's gonna be yeah if he was in Marvel he'll be with the gauntlets it'll be he'll be considered I guess an Omega level mutant so uh, okay <laughs> all right and powers keep evolving and changing as they go I like yeah because they're, they're bond to him so they are right. supposed to be like adaptable to any situation so when he's fighting the crux the gauntlets are going to pick up on how the crux is fighting him and he's going to give him an ability to handle the crux, but the crux is going to give him a ring, a ringer of the next couple of issues. So issue six, issue seven. Is mm -mm. Did, we lose him? Did we lose him? Knock some sense. So yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. All right. So we have, 
Uh, we have one question here from audience. Uh, says, I enjoyed the first five issues. As I told Dee the other day, my plan was to just read the first issue and then move on to another book in my to read pile, but I got caught up and read all five in that original setting. Wow. I appreciate that. I know, I know who that is. Okay, I appreciate that. Wait, appreciate who is it? it? Don't just leave us. Uh, uh, I, I don't want to pronounce the name wrong. It's By Byron or By Brian or Byron. Okay. But okay. All right. If you guys Hello. know what I'm talking about, I think you guys talked to him too on the Facebook status. I just don't want to say his name wrong. If I'm wrong, correct my name, correct it, but I think it's Byron or uh, Brian. B R Y O N, okay. I'm assuming. I think so, yes. Okay. Okay. But I appreciate that, man. Man, that means a lot. Thank you. I appreciate that. Hey, yeah. no, it's great to it's great for um to get people, you know, hooked with that first issue. That's one of the 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 best thing, Brad. I thought I figured it was Brad Arney. That's what. I, that's what. That's I thought what. It that's was. I'm sorry, it's Brad. Oh, okay. I didn't put Brad. his name completely. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> I'm, that, I'm terrible with names. As you'll see, I'm terrible with names. I apologize. <laughs> that comment sounds sounds very close to something that we've heard from Brad in the past. He's a he's a lover of of comic books and um. You there know, you go, Brad. Right. Yeah. So we um. I'm sorry. I apologize. I, I'm terrible with names. <laughs> Brad Bruce Wayne Arnie apparently because he buys everybody's Brad. Everybody's <laughs> <laughs> he said, All right, uh, well, billionaire philanthropist, comic book lover. All right, well, I mean, are you ready or I'm ready? I'm ready. Um, let's do uh quick takes. <laughs> quick takes. I gotta find my purple hat. I don't you know do. what I did with it. <laughs> when your kids took it, probably. Probably most likely. Most likely. All right. Uh Brother Daryl. Um, this section <laughs> is called Quick Takes. And um, if you haven't seen the show before, this section we're gonna give you 45 45 seconds to answer five questions off the top of your head. Okay. So mm -hmm. um in this week, you know, I usually scour your social media, but you really just post comic books on there. I've seen that you're um, a father, but um, we're going to ask you some some basic questions to get people to know to know you a little bit better. Okay. Do you need okay. a cup of water to get little hiccups? What? My, I told you, man, I've been feeling good, man. I'm sorry. Dang. So hold your breath. Uh, hold your breath. <laughs> so question number one: Since you are an artist and a writer, um, what's more important to you, the art or the story? Uh, definitely the story. Definitely the story. Okay. The story. Yeah. Why is that? Uh, if you don't have a good story, no matter how good your art is, because people, yes, they read it for the art and the story, but they mostly get sucked in by the story. Where is it going? Does it have a um, conclusion? Does it have a climax? Like, if you have bad writing and good art, it can have good art. But then if your story's going nowhere, people are like, okay, what, what is this? What's going on with it? So definitely story. I'm down with it. I like it. All right. Um, I saw also on your Facebook page, that you are uh, that you're you're a fan of the Creed movies like I am. Um, mm -hmm. So I got a question. Um, Rocky versus Adonis. Who wins and why? Mm, that is a good question. I would probably say Adonis because I think uh, his stamina might be going on a little bit longer. I know Rocky's more brutal, but if he can get around and outbox Rocky and get the stamina, I think Adonis will get him. I feel like this is like a Ali versus Tyson type discussion in a way. Old school know, versus man. old Rocky. school boxing. You think so? You think Rocky can go all 12? And you think uh, he can outbox him? I think Adonis probably has the, the technique, but Rocky's yeah. got the Rocky's got the heart, man. Right? Yep. It's, it's hard to beat somebody with that much heart. Um, yeah, I that, think, that is I true. Think it would be cool. I think it would be cool to see, though. Um, Plus, yeah. I think Rocky can take more punishment. Just Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, Creed, he didn't. The first one he lost in the first movie, but I mean, I think if he uses this technique and sticks to the simple technique of boxing, then I think he might be able to outbox. Even if he doesn't knock him out, he might get the win by the um, TKO or just by the, the points. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Um, an oldie but a goodie. We're gonna bring back a, a, a question that I think you'll you'll enjoy. Um, which one would you appreciate more? Um, fan art. Or if somebody did fan art of your character, or if somebody did a cosplay of your character, 
Definitely cosplay. Because if it's doing somebody's doing cosplay, that means it's going out there and people are actually reading it and it's getting noticed and people are actually dressing up because they're really invested in the character. So I would say cosplay. I think cosplay does like um, represent a, a certain type of investment. Like you really have to, yeah. And not that you know, our, our fan art is great, it's and great. I love it. Mm-hmm. Like we get, you know, we get fan art um, from all over the people and from all over the place, and and it's amazing. But it when when somebody literally is stitching and putting together outfits right i don't mm-hmm. know what it is man it's it's really weird because it's it's probably and i know it lo- like for for my character ace blade it's not hard to it wouldn't be hard to put together a, an ace blade costume but just to see right. it yeah you know, that's a different crazy. feeling yeah all right so just so you it's know different. dane when i first next time i see you i'm gonna wear a stripper ace blade as a cosplay <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's, that's gonna be a different kind stripper of stripper ace blade <laughs> <laughs> like, am I supposed to take out money? What am I supposed to do? I'm, <laughs> I'm confused. Uh, Don't terrible. let there be a stripper pole near me. I'll be gone. <laughs> uh, okay, so one thing we didn't talk to you about was um, conventions. Um, I don't know mm-hmm. if you do um, do many comic book conventions, but um, would you prefer to do big shows or smaller shows? I think big shows would be better. The big shows, it's um get your art more out there, and then also networking because with the big shows you actually meet some people that are in the industry that have the in the artist alley. Like last year, I did um Fan Expo Chicago. I met um Jorge Molina. He does the Batman's, and I met um Angel Medina. I met um I can't think of his name right now. I'm I told you I'm terrible with names, but he 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 used to draw for um. Futurama and a couple other shows. I forget his name, but uh, I met him, you know, exchanged Instagrams. I actually got Angel Medina as my friend on Facebook. So we chat every once in a while. He's actually out here in Chicago. I didn't even know that he lives out here in uh, the suburbs of Illinois. So so I think this, yeah, lo- uh, bigger shows because more networking and get your art out there to other artists that are in the industry and stuff like that. So, yeah, um, okay. we were fortunate to get uh, Eric Larson on our uh facebook and and nice talk to, him, to talk to him and uh so it's awesome to have have people like that um well connected folks like that yeah um, eric larson okay. is a tall dude by the way i've met him in person oh really is he tall yeah that fool is tall <laughs> wow six, okay. six six seven something like that oh wow yeah that is that look tall sitting down <laughs> no, no, no. i'm, I'm six two <laughs> Terrible. All right. Um, so last but not least, um, I know you know we do another show called Top Five Live. So every mm-hmm. every guest that we have on, I get them to do a top five off the top of their heads for this fifth question. And your top five is I want to hear your top five classic black hairstyles. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I know, what number one, I know what number one better be. Okay. Well, high top. I High top number one. S <laughs> curl. curl. Jerry okay. curl. Jerry curl. Waves, okay. of course. Waves. And the iconic fro. You know, got to rock the afro. fro. Nice. <laughs> the afro and the high top. Okay. I like it. I like it. So no so, corn rolls. Like no. Uh, no I did that in high school. Wasn't really a locks. fan of it. No locks. No bald head either. Too. I mean, well, I like I like dreads. I don't have a problem with dreads, but cornrows are not really my style. I did it. I tried it in high school. Didn't really like it. Okay, all right. I like that list. I like they got he brought out the S curl and the Jerry curl. Oh yeah, I used to when I was in uh, eighth grade. I had a little the little Jerry curl going on with the spray (laughs) with the (laughs) (laughs) the the soul glow. That's that's definitely a classic right there. Definitely a classic. All right. To make a villain high top villain that has an S curl, (laughs) sweating everywhere. (laughs) (laughs) Like old boy from uh, what's it called? Um, the Eddie Murphy uh, coming to America. 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 (laughs) You got a villain with the S curl and the the juice (laughs) juice is acid, and he just slinging it all over the place. (laughs) Um, well, that's been um our uh quick takes this week, brought to you by the YMCA. And um, <laughs> we appreciate you. We appreciate you uh, answering those answer those questions. No problem. All right. <laughs> All right, so we got we got a couple minutes. We're gonna look at what was uh, some comments here. 
Let me see if we got anything related to Javon said, I'm gonna wear Mormon ace blade. Okay. <laughs> make... Nice button up. Nice button up. I think it's supposed to be make it rain, not hey. make it raid. Hey, we gotta do it. We gotta do it. Uh Danny has an S curls installed. Wow. I did I did have a you you saw my, my man wig that I had with the um with the curly <laughs> hair. You saw that? Okay. I did. I do hey, gotta support yeah. the wife, you know. I support my wife all the time. That's because she's shorter than me, so I have to pick her up and support her like a baby. Yeah. <laughs> get her, get her a step stool. Go, go, get her a little ladder. All right. We have so many step stools in my house for her because she... really, yes, we got she two really in the kitchen right now. <laughs> Is she under five two? She's under five feet. Oh man, <laughs> really? Yes. I mean, I don't. I don't think I've seen any pictures on your Facebook y'all standing beside each other. Like, what's the height? How tall are you, Kyron? I'm 5'7 on a five good day. Seven. On wow. a good day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. On a good day. <laughs> Which is weird because my son is 6'3. <laughs> so, and then my wife is short. So when you yeah. see the three of us, it's like a steep <laughs> decline. <laughs> <laughs> you got one. You got one um, arm up here. One arm. Yeah. Down on us. <laughs> exactly. Skip the generation. Uh, <laughs> I love it. I love well, it. Well, no, because seriously, because my 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 brother is six foot one, and my dad is six feet, but my mom she's five foot four. Mm. So I got her height. Yeah. Right. I, I didn't realize yeah. I was that much shorter than Danny. It, Danny's tall, apparently. No, I'm only I'm only six foot. I'm not I'm not super tall. All right. All right. Well, end of the show. So we want to make sure we highlight our guests as best as possible. So, Darrell, where can people get your books, um, your social media, check you out, things like that? Uh, social media. My Instagram is art. What is it? Underscore of underscore Joab. And my website is fourthsundesigns.com slash comics. If you guys want to. It's T-shirts as well, posters, comics. So. Whatever you guys, I have an Etsy as well too. I forgot the name of my Etsy shop. I think it's just Fourth Sun Designs for my Etsy. Okay. And right. if you guys are local in Illinois, I have my comics and a couple of shops out here. So. Okay. All right. All right, Danny. Where can people find you and get your books? If you're looking for me, um, the best place to find me is our website, fourthwallpros.com. If you're looking for me on social media, it's at the Ace Blade on all social media platforms, except for YouTube. That's Fourth Wall Comics. Um, why you got to Why you got to mix it up like that? I don't know, man. I, I've been trying to focus. On, I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers on YouTube, and we're at like 700 right now. So I got to start pushing that thing. Thousand nice. subscribers is when you start getting paid. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just monetize that thing. Yeah, <laughs> gotta gotta do it. But um, all of a sudden, Danny's gonna have like four hundred emails. <laughs> <laughs> For real, like we finally hit a thousand. Ace Blade one at Gmail. Ace Blade five at Gmail. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Pirate, <laughs> pirate. Where can people find you? Uh, you can check me out online at touristcomics.com. You can get. Uh, all my books there, digital and physical copies. You can find me on all social medias, Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, Instagram, Tumblr, Taurus Comics, um, Facebook also, because people still use Facebook. Um, and if you <laughs> want to maybe check out past episodes of the Four Tales podcast, you can go to our website, fourtalespodcast.com, the number four, T-A-L-E-S podcast.com. You can find all our previous episodes there. You can even buy some merchandise, uh, maybe buy us a coffee to help support us financially because, you know, if Danny's up here getting paid through YouTube. I'm not getting paid at all. So help <laughs> us out if possible. Uh, but we will not have a show next week. Danny's going to be in Charlotte for the Charlotte Comic Con. He's a one day show there next Saturday. I will be in Fresno for the Anime Gaming Expo. I'll be there Saturday Fresno and Sunday. With the rich folks. Nice. <laughs> uh, you have no idea what Fresno is, do you? It's, it's not. That's not right. It's, no. Oh, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we don't I'll be, uh, that. <laughs> probably sometime next month. I'll be <laughs> setting up a, a Patreon account too, so it'll just be my name, Daryl Damper, or probably or Daryl Damper or Daryl D O six, whatever, for my Patreon account. I'll put the link up on Facebook and Instagram whenever I 
decided to set it up. I've been lazy with it. Been actually trying to do it for the past year now, but I don't have much content to put on there, but I'm working on it. So I'll be trying to set it up in March. I mean, February to do my Patreon. And I'm sure you'll probably have a link on your website. To yeah. Your Patreon. So definitely go there, sign up for his mailing list so you can get a free copy of his book. And then you know, uh, I think I have it going mind. on for issue one and two, if I'm not mistaken, the promotion is so get it. Issue one go. and two for free. Get hooked like Brad did and then get the rest of the story. And then when issue six comes out, you'll know when it is. Support the man. That's all we ask for. Appreciate um, you guys, man. Fans, future yeah, fans. Yeah. Appreciate it. But again, chess out in uh, two weeks where we're going to have creator, writer, inker Sean Barbour on. But until next time, sayonara, goodbye, and everybody, please take care of yourselves. Peace and blessings. The future is bright. Yes. I want to know what it is Quick is trying to say. Oh, 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 oh